What's up? What's happening? Good day, good afternoon, everybody. And this is Extreme Sports on WSSU 104.1, your number one source for Tiger Pride. I am the X Factor Xavier McKnight. And I'm Randolph Barrett. And it's going to be a great show today. We've got a special guest coming in a little bit later on in the show. Great show today, like I just said. SSU Sports gave us some highs and some lows over the past few days of the weekend. We're going to touch on that. Interesting comments made by an anonymous executive around the league regarding the Cleveland Cavaliers and what they should do with certain players and certain draft picks with their team. Kyrie Irving is leading the Celtics to a 13-game winning streak as we currently speak. More interesting MLB news, including one of the big stars who could be on the move. But let's segue into the first segment of the show just by talking about the SSU sports. I will simply touch on SSU volleyball first. Just by congratulating those ladies on a job well done on Sunday, coming out with a 3-2 victory over South Carolina State, sweeping the Lady Bulldogs this season. That's the first sweep of any program for the SSU volleyball program in quite some time. Yeah, definitely uh, congratulations to them. Um, a lot of improvement uh, this year from what I've seen, and uh, definitely congrats to them, of course, their first sweep in the uh, volleyball program. Coach Portier is uh, really doing a very good job just keeping the ladies focused no matter what because listen one thing we understand about volleyball that is a uh, very consuming sport to say the least because you have to win sets in order to win games and sets go up to as much as 25 points unless you play up to five and you only mm -hmm. end at 15. But what I will say that I take out of this game is that there is improvement for the Lady Tigers to build upon going forward, and that's just simply learning how to finish earlier in games because, Randolph, what I will say is this. There wasn't a single set where South Carolina State was in control of this game at all. The Lady Tigers easily could have won this set three games to, well, three sets to zero or three sets to one. And, yes, they did come out with the victory, but it really was a very uh, intense environment in Wiley Wilcox Gymnasium on this past Sunday, just to say the least, because there were many times where everybody was like, are the ladies going to pull this off? Mm -hmm. Because they began the, the final set up eight points to one, only for South Carolina State to come back and score seven straight points to tie things up at eight. Make it interesting. Now, I'm not sure if that was because they moved from one side of the net to the other. Maybe that could have possibly had an impact on it. But the Lady Tigers were able to close close it out and get a nice victory to close out their season. Very good way to send off two seniors in the program. Jade Monet Jones in particular. And, you know, you just talk about a great story here. She's been a four-year starter with this program, and for the game-clinching point, the set-winning point, she was the person who hit it over the net to bring home the victory. And also Allie, number two as well, just honoring those seniors. And we just like to say here on Extreme Sports, thank you to those two young ladies for their service and their dedication that they have given to the SSU volleyball program and the athletics program as a whole. Now let's segue into some SSU football. And Randolph, I was on the road with the team once again this weekend, final road game of the season, at North Carolina A&T. And what I take out of this game the most is that we are indeed improving as a program. But the question that I have is, how many of these younger players are going to stay at the next season when in 2019 the D Division II will officially be in effect for Savannah State? Because we have a lot of young players on this team who can make a lot of big plays and they can help take this program to higher heights. But are they going to want to play for a D2 program? I mean, simply, uh, I, that's a question I really can't answer. I mean, it's gonna, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to what they really want to do. If they want to stay and try and develop in a new culture here at Savannah State or if they want to move on and venture out to another program. Yeah, that's what it's definitely going to come down to. But listen, North Carolina A&T, congratulations to the Aggies, by the way. 10-0. and 10 and, yeah, 10 and 0. Have basically clinched the MEAC and are headed to the Celebration Bowl. I believe even if they lose to North Carolina Central this weekend, they may still have the tiebreaker in conference wins. 
over them or they'll at least be tied for it. I'm not sure how this whole thing will play out, but I know that that's a huge game this weekend around the conference. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody wants to be able to see it. But the Aggies are 10-0 and on the season right now. And, you know, not a lot of people expect to see that from this team, especially after losing a such a dynamic playmaker on offense like Tariq Cohen, who we see in the NFL now with the Chicago Bears. I had to cut him from my fantasy team a few times, <laughs> but he's still doing big things in the league nonetheless. But about our program, we are on the rise and we are improving. Because, listen, if it had not been for mental mistakes that were being made in that game, Savannah State would have won this football game. They at least spotted the Aggies 21 points just based on mental mistakes. 17 points off turnovers. They had four turnovers in the game. So they still, they had a good chance of winning this game. They had a very good chance of winning this game. They fought hard all the way through. It was just at a certain point in the third quarter, I want to say around the five-minute mark, you just saw that youth show back up. And as we know with younger players, because we see this in professional sports all the time, they don't always know how to respond to adversity when being, when having to handle it per se. And you saw that a lot going into the closing minutes of the third quarter, going into the fourth. But one thing about this Tigers team that needs to be said is these guys always fight. They don't ever give up. They scored a touchdown towards the end of the game. Final score was 36-17. to Their final game of the season is this weekend against South Carolina State, 1 p.m. Eastern time at Ted R. Wright Stadium, Theodore, Wright, R. Sta Theodore R. Wright Stadium, excuse me, where we will have 24 seniors being honored on Senior Day. Yeah, it should definitely be a good game. Um expecting those guys to come out and, and, and play well their final uh, home collegiate game. So I'm definitely looking for, you know, to, to see, especially those seniors, to see what they're going to come out and do this weekend. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting take. I mean, 24 seniors, I mean, that's a lot. That That's all I can say about it. That's a lot, and I just wonder how much production – is going to be lost as a result of that, how that will impact this team going into the future. But the young guys are really picking up their weight because some of the seniors being honored are players who haven't even played this season due to injuries, unfortunately. So some of the young guys have had to pick up that slack too. But 24 seniors being honored. But let's touch on South Carolina State. They're one of the best defensive teams in the Mideastern Athletic Conference, to say the least. Well, and so much this year. 3-6 this year. So it hasn't been a great year, but as, as uh, history has shown, they always compete well against Savannah State. Yeah, history has shown that they always compete well against Savannah State. You know, last season they had, I believe he was 55 years old, if I, if, if I want to be correct. Yes, it was last season. season. They had the 55-year-old running back <laughs> come in and score a touchdown. He may have been slightly older than that. I'm not sure. Nah, I don't think he's older than 55. I don't think. He, he was 55 on the dot, okay. But they have one of the best defenses in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. But as the Curtis Foster, one of the uh, voices of the SSU Radio Network, would like has always said, anything can happen in the MEAC. Listen, we watched Delaware State go win a road mm. game earlier this season State. against a team that they were not supposed to beat at all. So anything can happen in this conference. And Devon Gibbons has just continued to improve week in and week out. Of course, he had a few turnovers this weekend against North Carolina A&T, but the Aggies have one of the top five best defenses in all of the FCS. So I expected that to some degree. And listen, I don't like to throw players under the bus, but veteran players on that team in particular, I'm not going to name any names. You have to catch touchdowns. You have to catch the ball. You have to put your quarterback in a better light than you did this past weekend. You're a playmaker. You're a veteran on the team. You have to make those plays. So now let's segue into the SSU basketball program where they opened up their regular season this past Friday at Cincinnati. They lost that game 77-107. to It was actually a hard-fought game by the Tigers before the Bearcats just pulled away, yeah, pulled away and they 
showed you why they are one of the top teams in all of college basketball. Ranked number, they're sitting 12. They're sitting right. at number 12 yeah. right now. Came into the game at 12. So when the rankings come back out, they might actually be a little higher. I'm not sure. We'll have to keep up with their schedule too. But the Tigers opened up their home opener this past Monday against East Tennessee State University. East Tennessee State, one of the better teams that Savannah State has faced to open up the season over the years. And Randolph, just listen at these numbers. Since Division I play, Savannah State had been 12-3 and in home openers prior to this past Monday, 12-0 and in home openers under the Horace Broadnax era, including the first year he was head coach, and they only won two games. One of the first two games they won was that home mm-hmm. opener, and they've averaged 75.3 points per game in those home openers. I'm not sure what exactly happened this past Monday, but that streak of winning home openers came to an end, unfortunately. What happened was quite simple, though. They couldn't shoot the basketball. They couldn't shoot the basketball. They didn't really play good defense. Here's what I'm going to go ahead and say right now. They started off shooting the three ball very well. They made their first three three three-pointers in this game take a 9-0 lead. It's like, okay, the three is working for you right now. But I was sitting on the radio broadcast with uh, Clarence Wilson and TH1, who everyone knows is Terry Hines, because I'm also a member of the SSU radio basketball team as well helping report with them. Also, great job to all of us, what we did on Monday. It was our first game together, and we already have a budding chemistry with each other, so I just want to throw that out there as well for anybody who may tune into the games. But I said immediately right there on the headset, all right, it's nice to see the three-pointers are falling. Now let's find a way to get other shots. Let's find a way to shoot mid-range shots. Let's find a way to get in the paint. Let's find a way to grab offensive rebounds and box out and get layups and dunks and whatever. And that is not what happened at all. Here are the numbers for you folks. And I hate to be the person to have to bring this up. The Tigers shot 7 of 33 from the three-point line this past Monday. That is a 21% percentage from that line. Randolph, what are your thoughts? Because I'm sitting over here shaking my head right now. For me, it's quite simple. I mean, you come out and you make three of your first three threes. Okay, it, clearly that's something you can rely on, but you can't settle for those shots consistently. What I see when I go to, uh, what I've seen over the past year in his system he's been running, is it's a run and gun system. They run down the court and they're trying to shoot as fast as possible. Um, so just simply not settling so much for as many threes as they take as we've seen in the, uh, the Fort Valley game where we're like 8 for 50-something. So, um, yeah, that's one. And then getting better defensively. But, I mean, it's, it's all going to take time. It's new guys, guys coming back. It's all going to take some time. It's definitely going to take some time for the Tigers to get their system together. New guys coming okay. back. Guys, uh, guys just now coming into the system. Guys like a Jalen Smith. Guys like Tyleek Evans. And listen, what I will say right now about Tyleek Evans, he's a five foot seven guard, but he really puts me in the mind of somebody like a Patrick Beverly in the NBA because he plays with that bulldog mentality. He plays tough. Randolph, Tyleek was going up in the paint trying to grab rebounds with the seven footers of East Tennessee State when our taller players were not trying to necessarily do that. He's a bulldog. He has that type Got of mentality heart. in him. He has heart. He has heart. So the Tigers, they have another game tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Tiger Arena against Middle Georgia State University, where I will say right now, I know that it is very early on in the season, but at this point, this is a must win for the Tigers right now, in my opinion, because they have to get that chemistry going with each other. They have to get, they have to start back playing defense. Horace Broadnett's coach teams, are, those are usually some of the best defensive teams in the MEAC. So they have to get back on defense. They have to stop settling for three-point shots. They have to just find ways to get the ball in the basket and just, bring yeah, home just, some victories. Just get better looks. Stop settling for the three. I mean, you're going to make them, but just just don't settle. Because I believe they're definitely going to be a better team throughout the season, but it starts right now. It starts right now. 